Okay, so today we're going to talk about new build. Uh, it's a top leaderboard build. It's a very strong build in my opinion. A very high synergistic and it has been made popular by the player Orlando VM. Currently ranked 14 right now. So, this build consists of a plant, a discard buck and a Nemo with a cute bunny in the back lane. So how do we actually build this build and what are the uh, alterations we, we can do to make the build ours in a way. So for the plant, I have three main components that I feel fits the build very well, which is a hotbutt cactus and a garish worm. On top of that is the mouth card, but we'll talk about these three cards first. So hotbutt allows us to feel safe when we hotbutt and disable the enemy mouth cards and such and such. Quickly try is just very solid damage if you're if you're going against aqua teams like triple aqua teams or double aqua plant which is very another popular build. So cactus helps us do heavy damage against those types of build. And on top of that, even if it's a normal plant, it still does very solid damage. Garish worm is just a very strong card that has high synergy with your buck and your cute bunny. This allows us to chain much more easier just in case if they snipe our mid liner. We still have our Garage Worm to chain our cute bunnies, or even if our back laner, we still have Garage Worm to chain our uh, Garage Worm here as well. So, the mouth cut is where it gets very different. In terms of mouth cuts that we can go for, uh, definitely Vegan Diet, Serious Bite, and Pincer on the mouth. Uh, but I, in terms of ranking, I think I'll rank Pincer as my number one choice on top of vegan diet. These two will be your number one choice, then zigzag, and then serious bite, being the lowest tier, but still all playable, all playable, okay? Uh, the reason why I feel pincer is one of the better mouth cards for this build, it's one, it, it's a very easy chaining on garish worm and cute bunny. Number two, it's a zero cost, which allows us to play more freer in our early to mid game. And on top of that, it discards the enemy cards, which is a confirmed kind of uh, value comparatively to Serious Bite, where you cause one energy, and the chances of you stealing the energy might not be there. But if you do get that steal, it does it can basically snowball the team quite well if you can get the Serious Steal. And why did I choose Vegan Diet as one of my top choices as well? Because Vegan Diet, in my opinion, is a very underrated card. It gives 75 and 75 a shield and attack. Even though you might not all the time heal, it's still a solid card. I would take a Vegan Diet pit, uh, basically an armor up and a 75 damage Vegan Diet over a chance to steal an energy anytime. Because even if I don't heal up, I still have so much tank ability. I get to last more turns and I get to deal some chip damage, which allows this team needs chip damage because the damage it has isn't that high with the Parasite, Fishnack, Pincer, and maybe Goldfish. All these are not very high DPS cards. And on top of that, you do not want to be wasting your high damage cards in the early to mid game. So all this chip damage helps deal with the enemy frontliner and allows the, a much more easier mid game. And Pincer also allows us to do that. Whereas Serious Bite doesn't really allow us to chip. And if we miss the Serious Bite, we're kind of set back. Another option if you really can't find this kind of builds is you can go a Hot Butt Garish Worm is the main core. I feel is the main core. And then the Cactus, you can swap it with a Dual Blade or a Little Branch. It's also great because it just helps deal with, again, chip damage to the enemy plant. If you want to go with Orlando's build, it's fine as well with Cute Bunny, Cactus, Garish, and Carrot. I think this is also a decent kind of plan where uh, it kind of gives you energy generation from the Carrot if you time it well. It also gives you solid damage from the Cute Bunny and the, and the Cactus as well. So this is also another solid option if you are going for this plan. So there are a lot of variety of plant tanks you can go for, but the general consensus is that you want a Cactus you can have a hot butt and, and then a garish. But basically, I think cactus, cactus or dual blade or little branch, any beast or cactus is a great alternative. I wouldn't recommend beach because you want some uh, guaranteed damage with cactus and you're planning on going 31 speed either way. So that, if you're not 31 speed, if you're a faster speed, then cactus doesn't work that well. That's why dual blade is also another good option. But it's, uh, finding a pincer with a cactus is also very rare. So these are just alternatives you can go for. It's not set in stone, but these are definitely one of the few choices I definitely do recommend if you're going for a plant tank for this build. 
Then we're going to our midliner, which is a discard bug. A discard bug, I feel the best build for a discard bug will be of course Pinsir, Garish Worm, Parasite, Fishnack with two plant body parts. But that being said, it does not matter too much, but definitely 31 speed allows you to chain Cute Bunny in a much more better way. I'll show you that in the replays later and I explain why 31 speed is a good alternative. And if you can get two plant cards on top of this build, I think that'll be the best option for the mid. It's like a min-maxed version of the bug because you're slow. On top of that, you have a lot of HP because this bug's job is just to tank, really tank. Tank as much as you can. And the reason why we go Garish Worm um, instead of like Sander and all that is because it's a range card. If you're dealing with a Gravelance, one Gravelance, if you have a Sandal or all that, will just disable your mid. Because Fish Knight is also another core component to your uh, defense. And if they gravel land that, at least now you have still have a gar Garish Worm and Parasite to armor up that turn to stall the match as much as you can. So the goal of the discard bug is just to stall the match, go into the mid to late game, and allow your backliner, which is your cute bunny, to constantly apply fear. And since this guy is very slow, like if you can get a 31 speed slow, this guy will always be able to cute bunny and fear the guy. Then the guy will miss two turns. And this, since this guy is all bugs, it's very easy to chain the cute bunny as well. So this allows you to constantly chain fear them while this guy slowly just tanks up and stalls the game and discards the cards. And just limits their card play and forces them into very bad card play positions. So this team here, of course I feel in my opinion the Oranda is better than Showstar. I know Orlando runs a Showstar, but I feel Oranda is just a, just a better card in general. Uh, comparatively to Showstar, but it's still workable. Showstar is still fine, it does solid damage and it allows you to do to prevent last stands. So this is also another solid build, but in my opinion, I think Oranda is a better option for this build. Okay, so now we're going to go through some replays and how I play this team. That, this is the team that I'm going to be running. This exact build is a vegan diet cactus garage from Hotbutt. A full reptile and plant cut again. Double plant will be better, but reptile is fine. Uh, speed doesn't really matter too much. This is a standard very discard bug. And then the Nemo, Cute Bunny, Oranda, Goldfish in the back lane. So we're going to go through five replays today, and I'm going to go through five different lineups and matchups and how this team deals with those matchups. So the first matchup we are going to go look at is the very standard BBP. So this guy has a very strong, um, very standard plant. Not very standard, but very solid plant. Very strong mid lane uh, beast with heroic hair dagger, sinister strike, death mark for free speed. This is a very strong one, and a very strong bird as well with soothing song, black male or shiny form. So the con general idea of this team is that you want to play your plant as much as possible in the early to mid game. So you can open up the mid game for you to start chaining your uh, Nemo, your cute bunnies into their mid lining and really preventing them much a lot of mid lane play. On top of that, you want to be discarding his cards to limit their card pool. So they can't really play good turns. They are forced into very bad card plays in a way, less optimal card combos. So let's see how this team fares. Early game. I did not play Garish here because I had nothing to chain it and I had very solid spicy surprise cactus uh, on top of discarding his cards here. So let's see how it goes. The spicy surprise shield is very good as well with the 50 shield. I'm going to be able to spice him to prevent a serious bind next turn. And this discard was very clutch as I removed the soothing song. This forces him to not be able to play the soothing song next turn to basically confirm the kill onto my plant because I'm in Soothing Song plus one card kill range. So I, ca I can actually play armor this turn if I wanted to. And this will force him to actually play his beast in this turn. So I'm just going to make sure I kill off his plant. Now I now that I've opened up the mid game, basically opened up the, his mid liner. In the mid game, this is where the high synergy comes into play. Um, the chances of him playing his beast is very low now because he knows Cute Bunny is available. The only way he can prevent a Cute Bunny and basically preventing him from using his cards is by playing an egg bomb, which forces him into a very weird kind of play. Because I, I can actually kill off his bird now. And on top of that, 
the idea of this team of this guy being very fast and this guy being very slow helps with the synergy of that I can always anything in between these two axes I can always kill bunny them fear them for two turns making forcing them to not be able to play for those two turns and this guy can tank up a lot to the point where he doesn't really do much damage to where this guy can really last to the late game as well so we're going to see here how he tries to kill my buck and with my double reptile parts and plant part i'll have a lot of hp to able to withstand majority of the hits he's going to be throwing at me so yeah, i don't kill the bird he just do, do a very good egg bomb play here to prevent the keep the beast alive but i know i can always close out the match with my aqua onto his beast he plays a double hair dagger i play a fish snack just for the armor because again i want to keep my buck alive as long as i can so i can close off the match with my aqua he double hair daggers me and thanks to actually my uh, double plant parts at uh, this uh, double basically the more HP parts, it allows me to actually have enough HP to probably survive this and enter last stand. This is actually very important. And since I'm entered last stand, I still have a body alive. And this allows me to close off the match with my Aqua. Even though he has all out shot and all that, he won't be able to hit my Aqua directly or crit me to win the game. Because I have this buck here to tank. And then I'll just close off the match with my Aqua. So this is a replay against a standard BBP, how this team fares against a BBP and a very strong BBP right now. And if you guys are wondering what rank I am, I am currently rank 5, rank 4 in the world. And on top of that, I have played this team and tested out this team against the top players and I have a win, in a way a win streak against majority of the teams. So now we're going to go against another very strong team, which is... Um, this is the double poison meta. It's a very, very strong meta in the season 18 and still very strong right now before the patches, if there's any patches coming ahead. Let's see how this team fares against this. So it does, he does a very solid round one play where he yams and Sirius bites me to steal one energy. Really slowing down my tempo, but I draw double garish and double discard to really limit his card play. On top of that, I have Oranda just to clear off his front as fast as possible so I can enter the mid game where I can start doing the synergy of the cute bunny and preventing this guy from attacking his midliner since his midliner is directly after my aqua. So I'm going to probably try to clear off his front as fast as possible now. Let's speed up a bit. I remove very core cards that he needed, like a chomp or anything. So this is where the discard bar also comes into play where I can really limit his card play. He does unfortunately jump my back line in round 3 before I could kill bunny here and stall out the match even more. But this is still not the end of it. As long as my cute bunny is alive and I, I'm relatively healthy, I can still survive for a few more turns to make sure I end off the game with my cute bunny chaining. And this play here uh, was very important for me as well. And this is only possible if you had vegan diet. Because if you had cute bunny, you had pincer. Pincer is actually not bad, it's still playable. But with vegan diet, I can actually use up one energy and get mass, massive value by healing up my Axie back to full HP. Thanks to the vegan diet. On top of that, right now I'm just probably going to try to play, try to chain him and try to fear him to prevent him from jumping my backline. That crit was very lucky for me. And on top of that, with the fish snack, I can actually stun him and prevent a lot of poison stack damage onto me. So, which is very important as well that I have the fish snack to prevent his full combo onto my buck, keeping my buck relatively healthy as well. Now the most likely play I doubt is for him to jump my mid, and we'll be able to see the power of this tank in action, the power level it has with the cactus and the spicy surprise damage. So he plays, uh, he attacks my mid lane, which is not the end of the world. It's still alive. I'm going to give him a full hit. And this is why I prefer Spicy Surprise over Cactus. With this Spicy Surprise play, I remove his mouth cards, which means he has less one... Uh, I know he has less 150 shield card if he ever draws a chomp. And this is actually very important this round. Since he cannot use his chomp, he cannot have 150 shield. And this allows me to play a Nemo or Randa Kill Bunny 
to just barely kill him. If he played the shield, he would have been alive. So this play here actually pre uh, this spicy supply actually prevents him from surviving this round as well and giving me the win. So the next thing I'm going to show is another very solid team in the top 100 ml is the double aqua with a backliner as a bird. This is also a very strong team that has been played in the top tier MMRs. Uh, it has a very strong survivability uh, in the mid to early game and just an all-rounder very hard to deal with team with all the healing and everything. And on top of that, he has a lot of piercing sounds. So I took that in note that he has a lot of piercing sounds, which means he's probably going to be throwing up piercing sounds whenever he can to prevent me from using much of my cards. And this team is very strong in a way where it can throw cards if it has to. It, it's not like a shrimp garage where you are forcing yourself to draw the shrimp combo in order to kill him. This team has a good play every round, which is also very important. So round one, I'm just going to play my garish garish and a vegan diet and you can see how much shielding the vegan diet actually gives me it makes my tank re uh, relatively still very healthy i'm just going to garish him vegan diet unfortunately it went down so my damage is split up which is what this guy wants because he can actually just heal up both of his guys which is very bad for me but still i we will be able to see how this team fares against bad kind of uh very bad rounds for us basically in this round, we will be able to see how Cactus also deals with Aqua kind of uh, axes. Dealing 170 damage, that's a lot of damage. This is why Cactus is also very important in this team. Now I'm just going to try to remove as much cards as I can and try to deal as much chip damage as I can to him. Because I do not want him to be piercing sound and removing my energy as well. So now I'm going to be able to close off. Since my Aqua is faster than his Aquas, I'm going to be able to kill off one of his Aqua with my Aqua before he can heal up. But he does play a very good egg bomb play here that drags the, my aggro to him and he gets to heal up and do a lot of damage to my bug. In this scenario, my bug is probably too low HP for me to actually play an anesthetic bait so I don't think I'll be playing anesthetic yet. So I'll probably be clearing off his frontliner if I can. So now that I clear off his frontliner, um, I'm going to be in a 1 versus 2 where I probably have to think how would he be playing. So I'm... He does break one energy. I'd use a Nemo to clear off that guy. And in this turn, if I'm not wrong, I play a lot of cards here. This is because I was expecting an egg bomb play. And even if he doesn't egg bomb play, I will kill this guy and close off the match with whatever cards I have against his backline because I know he does not have enough energy to kill me. So this, either way, these two here, all of these cards here are fine. And I'll be speed up faster than his Axie as well with the Goldfish. This is why Goldfish is also another core component of this team, even though I'm already faster than him. But if it was the same speed one, I'll be faster than him and I'll close off the match this way. Okay, so that's how this team fares against the double Aqua Bird. Now let's see how this team fares against a plant, double plant with bird, which is also another very strong team. So this is a double plant with a bird in the back line with Cocoon, Sinister Strike, Head Egg, a very strong team as well with a double plant. Um, this plant is heavy DPS and heavy shield to protect the bird. So round one, again, Garish Cactus, very solid play. I'm going to again try to clear off the front, enter the mid game. So I can start doing my cute bunny triggers into preventing his midliner from playing much. Since these guys are very slow, anything again, anything in between these two axis speed range is the dead zone where the enemy cannot play anything thanks to cute bunny. So that's where the synergy comes in place with two very slow axes or, or bug axis in the midliner allowing us to very easily chain our cute bunny. So he's going to try to kill us, but the thing is we're going to have vegan diet. And vegan diet allows us to heal up a lot of HP and tank up. Without vegan diet, we'll be very low HP already. But thanks to the vegan diet shield, we are actually very healthy. <laughs> and on top of that, we actually crit. With that one crit, I probably just removed all... I, he used a lot of cards to actually try to kill me. And right now, I'm still very healthy. On top of that, I discard his cards so he does not have 
enough cards to really play against me as well. So the synergy again comes into play, where this guy is very tanky, forcing the enemy to be using a lot of cards to try to kill it. So he has not much card play in the mid to late game. And on top of that, I'm giving him discard pressure. So he, he still does not have very good card plays in the mid to late game. So again, look, the reason why he does not play his plant is cause of the synergy uh, between the cute bunny as well. Because I'm going to be disabling two of his two of his cards if he actually use up his energy to try to play his mid game. So he can't even play his plant. He's feared. He has so much cards on his uh, mid laner. And I'm just going to kill off this guy. Discard his cards even further. I can allow this guy to die, but he's so healthy thanks to vegan diet, he won't die that easily. And he just doesn't have the cards to really close off, uh, close off the game. So I'm just going to end the game this way. So this match shows the synergy between the buck and the aqua, where I'm always faster than anything in between my buck speed and my aqua speed. I'm always going to be able to kill bunny. And I'm always going to be able to fear the mid, the mid game. So let's watch one more replay against Pem Pem Vn, which is also a very strong player. Let's see how this match goes. So again, this is final thoughts. The general consensus of the game is you want to clear off the front tank and get as much value from your front tank as possible and as early as possible, so you can open up the mid game for your cute bunny to chain with your buck and prevent him to, from playing his mid liner. On top of that, you want to be playing your discard buck to limit his card play as well and force him to very card, bad card play pos positions. So let's just see how this match goes. I draw a very strong round one play where I played a spicy surprise, cactus and garish. He tries to steal an energy. This is why I do not like serious bite as well. It's very risky. And since that I played three cards and have high armor, he barely does any damage to me this round. On top of that, I disable and do a lot of damage to him. So this round is a win, in a way, a profit win for me, where I go ahead in energy and card and damage. So on top of that, we will be able to see how Vegan Diet works as well, as a very solid mouth card. So he tries to really put me down to a very low HP. He tries, he needs to clear off my front tank as fast as possible so he can actually play his mid liner against uh, while his plant tank is alive. But since I have vegan diet, I heal up again. And this actually, he didn't spicy surprise me in time. I already healed up. And the spicy surprise barely did any damage and I'm still so healthy to go into the mid game. And he tries to kill me. I'm still alive. I kill off him and I spicy surprise his cute bunny so he won't be able to kill bunny me. And right now, since his front liner is dead, his mid liner is already opened up to my cute bunny play. So he's probably very afraid to play his mid liner. Because again, anything between my aqua and my buck is a dead zone for him. If he is going next after my aqua, I can always chain my cute bunny since my buck has all buck cards and that will prevent him from and playing his mid laner anytime. And on top, since I discarded a lot of his cards and make him use a lot of cards to try to kill my plant, he is so down on cards that he can't really have very strong card plays as well. So he's forced to play a cactus and use up one of his high damage cards to ensure the kill. Instead of probably, if I didn't have vegan diet, he probably would have killed me with a single uh, spicy surprise or something like that. So again, he cannot, even though he dropped three very strong DPS cards on his mid liner, he won't be able to play it thanks to the Aqua. Because I'm going to be able to, again, fear him, forcing him to not be able to play his mid liner. And then I'm just going to close, close off the game with a 2v1. So in this scenario, uh, having slower speed will be better. Because if I'm going to be damaging his plant, like so, he will be lower HP than me and he'll be faster than me and I'll be able to fear him. And again, the dead zone. Anything in between my buck and my aqua is a dead zone where you cannot play cards because I'm constantly going to be cute bunny and terror chomping and fearing you. And my buck will always be able to trigger the cute bunny no matter what. 
Plus it has so much armor to protect itself as well. This bug is very important by having a lot of armor and HP. So only in this scenario where I feel a 31 speed bug would be better. But again, since I'm faster than him, I go first as well. I can actually kill him before he hits me as well. So again, it doesn't really matter too much that you are faster than him. Just like right now, I'm faster than him. I get to close off the match with my bug. Since I go first, he won't be able to hit me. And look at the armor this bug can actually put up. Up to 200 armor with these cards. So as you can see, this team has very strong synergistic values with all its axes. With your plant being able to survive a lot of the early to mid game, your bug able to discard them and really forcing him into very bad card plays or maybe not even plays at all to kill your plant. And your plant can heal up if he's fighting another plant or have very high shielding and stall out the game even longer. The discard also stalls the game even longer. And once you kill the enemy plant, you open up the mid game to your cute bunny into his mid liner. And it's very easy for you to chain with your bug. And it always usually fears them and causes them to miss out two skills. On top of that, and once the mid liner is dead, you're basically on a two versus one against his back liner. And your bug has enough shield to really tank and allow you to close off the match with the aqua damage or the bug damage. On top of that, you even have Nemo's to give you enough energy to play high shoot turns or high damage turns to close off the match as well. So that's the basic idea of the team and how synergistic the team is with each other. Uh, if you enjoyed the video again, thank you guys for watching. Feel free to drop a like, it does help the YouTube algorithm. If you want to get notified about my videos, please do click the notification bell below to get notified about my videos. Thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.